Hello everyone, my name is Peter Xu and uh, I work for Red Hat Virtualization Team. Today my topic is about post-copy preemption. This is an outline of uh, the presentation that I plan to uh, provide. Firstly, uh, we will quickly go over live migration, pre-copy and post-copy and how it works. And then uh, we will start to focus on post-copy, on its limitations and challenges. Um, as a follow-up, I will try to propose three optimizations uh, based on existing vanilla post-copy on different uh, aspects of it. And, uh, uh, and all of them will try to improve page request latencies by reducing it. Uh, at last, uh, some performance results will be shared, and I will also mention some of the future works that I plan to do. So what is post-copy? Uh, comparing to pre-copy, it is a way to allow virtual machine to start on destination without migrating all the data, which means the virtual machine will start to run with partial RAM migrated. Uh, to, to achieve this, we need some way to trap page faults uh, when there are missing pages, uh, which is called user for FD in Linux. And the post copy has a very good thing in that it always converges and uh, is probably the most reasons one of the most reasons that people use user for FD uh, is to make it converge, especially for um, huge virtual machines or virtual machines that may not easily converge with uh, some relatively high workloads. And what is post copy preemption? It is a new capability introduced uh, only for post copy, not for pre copy, because it is going to solve issues. Uh, in post copy only. It needs to be enabled on both Thor's and destination of QMU, which is uh, quite common. Uh, we need to do that uh, anyway for most of the f uh, capabilities. Uh, it is not compatible with vanilla post copy. It means uh, we cannot uh, migrate from an old QMU, which has no post copy, to a new QMU, which has post copy preemption. So we cannot really migrate from a vanilla post copy to the new QMU with the preemption mode enabled. We need to either uh, use the legacy way to migrate with post copy, or uh, we need to have both of the binaries to be latest to support preemption mode. One good thing to mention is that there is no extra configuration needed for the post copy preemption feature. So why we, why we need that feature? Why, we, why not we make it the default? It's simply because uh, this um, new capability or say this new mode of post copy changes the live migration stream or say the protocol between the source and destination. So it just won't really work with uh, the older binaries. That's why we need a new capability. Or otherwise it should really be, uh, I would really suggest if somebody is using post copy, um, it should really be worthwhile to consider try this preemption mode because it uh, it should be nothing but improve uh, performance on the page fault request latencies. Um, it's, it's just that we need we, to be compatible with all the post copy. We need a new capability bit. That's all of it. There will be some, some test results uh, shared at the end of the presentation. Okay, let's quickly go over migration. Uh, this is how pre-copy work. Uh, so in pre-copy, what we want to do is to migrate a virtual machine live from source to destination. On the source, there are two kinds of pages. Well, the first one is called dirty page, which means this page is um, modified uh, on the source and there is no uh, latest page uh, copied over to the destination so we need to migrate those and there are also clean pages which means we could have migrated some of the pages and they didn't change along the way until now it means uh, this page are kept the same content on source and destination even if source is running as long as these pages are not written or updated these, these pages are clean and we don't need to migrate it again. So uh, when we migrate page in the page, the so-called page stream, we only migrate dirty page, never clean page. 
On the other hand, on destination, we could have um, a f a quite a few kind of pages. Firstly, there can be clean page, as I mentioned, because they are identical to the source. There can be missing pages, which means we haven't yet migrated any version of this page, so it's missing. There can also be stored pages, which means we used to migrate this page, but the content of the page changed on the source. It means this page, even if migrated, is stored, and we need to up update this one. These, these pages will finally be discarded. Uh, when pre-copy completes, we will see all the pages are clean pages on both source and des destination. Uh, what we need to do right now is just to switch over the running state from source to destination and the migration is complete. Now and then we can destroy the source instance uh, safely. So, uh, but uh, if we want to run pre-copy but run the virtual machine on destination before everything is copied over, we call it post-copy. So what we can do here is, firstly, we know the store pages. So assuming we have the way to trap, uh, when the page is missing, we can uh, have a way to trap the page faults. Because store page won't trigger any page fault, we probably need to discard them beforehand. So this is what post copy looks like. We, th we just firstly, we firstly drop the store pages into missing pages. So we just got more missing page. And then uh, we start running the virtual machine on the destination. Uh, when we access a missing page, we will stop the virtual uh, vCPU thread. Send a page request to the source, which uh, I used a green diamond to show here. And then the source virtual machine will send those requested pages back, which I call it our urgent page. So in post-copy, actually, there are two kinds of pages, unlike pre-copy. The uh, first one is the background page, which uh, we used to call it the clean pages that, we, um, um, that uh, we are migrating with uh, in the background. These pages are not really accessed by the de destination yet. And there are also some of the pages that are requested explicitly from the, users, uh, from the destination virtual machine. So they requested uh, using the page requests in the message channel and this channel is also special to post copy because uh, it does not really uh, exist for pre copy, of course. Um, it's not, uh, it's optional. Actually, it existed, but it's optional. For uh, post copy, it is required. What we do here is we just uh, send the urgent pages alongside with the background pages. If there is any urgent page, we handle them and we queue them into the same page stream so that uh, uh, ultimately the page will be resolved. The page fault will be resolved on destination. So uh, we quickly went over pre-copy and post-copy. Uh, especially on post-copy, we do have uh, quite a few limitations. Firstly, there is a risk of a split brain. For example, if the network fails during post-copy, as we know, we are doing remote page faults. It means uh, we cannot do the page fault anymore and uh, the thread can potentially harm for a long time. And if uh, with a very old QMU, it also causes direct, directly split brain and the guest will crash. After QMU 3.0, we have a post copy recovery uh, which covers this case so that we can uh, resume the, the post-copy migration after the network is recovered. The second major issue is about high page request latency. For pre-copy, actually, there is some effect. On tracking 30 pages, we do have some penalty as well, but not as large as when we are using post-copy. Uh, it uh, can be shown in different aspects. Firstly, especially on huge pages, uh, we need to service a page fault 
by copying over the whole huge page. Uh, for each of the huge page, it can be as large as two mega or even one gig on x86, and uh, it varies on different architectures, but majorly it's the same idea that a huge page can contain a lot of small pages and migrate that huge page can take a lot of time already. It means the page for the latency can be drastically huge. Uh, Upstream Linux actually has something called a huge TRB double map, or the name could uh, be sub page mapping or something. Uh, anyway, the name is prone to change so far, and uh, uh, for whatever uh, name it will be, uh, it is solving the problem of having the huge TRB pages mapped smallly. Uh, for example, 4K on X86. Uh, so that it uh, uh, provides us with a mechanism we can migrate a uh, huge page backed virtual machines just like when we are using 4K pages. So that is a great thing to have. Uh, alongside, we will not lose the TRP heat and all the huge page benefits before or after migration. We only lose it during migration, but it's fine, mostly. Uh, even if we can have this for Qmu, uh, we still have some other issues, uh, even on 4K, because the page transfer are really slow uh, for Qmu. If any of us would like to measure, uh, so what I did a uh, test with 10 gig uh, network for one busy, busy random access over, uh, actually over. Uh, a large range of memory. Uh, uh, I got an average of 12 milliseconds per page request. In average, that's uh, so it can be more or less. But in average, it's 12 milliseconds, which is quite large for a 4K page. It is not really something that, uh, so, uh, it's not about the network is so long, it's really about uh, the software overheads which is not really necessary, and we ne really need to look into that to optimize and make it faster. Because this test was really uh, tested uh, based on direct directly attached hosts, and really shouldn't be like that. So, uh, what is the major problem underneath? Uh, firstly, uh, the major problem is, uh, is that uh, we are using a page stream if we still remember, uh, this page is actually a uh, kind of an amplified version of previous uh, picture we uh, we had just now. It's, uh, it have, uh, just uh, removed some of the components and uh, there is an emphasis on how page stream is handled. Uh, if we still remember, uh, when we get page folder requests, we will queue the urgent pages in the page stream uh, which is shown in the green blocks. But the problem is, uh, before we do the in queue, there can be background pages which is shown in the yellow blocks. Uh, we could have had all those in the send buffer already, which means uh, we can't service a page fold by the green block before we flush all the red uh, yellow blocks. So uh, for Qmu, we can do something like that. For example, we have the Qmu file, we have the buffering. Maybe we can do this somehow. It will be awkward and it could be also challenging because probably we need to uh, manipulate the buffers. Maybe we need some memory movements and maybe we need uh, um, some tricks. And even not to mention about Qmu file, Let's imagine the page stream as a TCP socket and it has send buffer. We still cannot really overcome with uh, send, uh, we, ha we could have some background pages uh, queued in the send buffer, which we cannot really see from the user space. So it's kind of a kernel thing. And we cannot really, uh, I mean, this send buffer is really useful for us to have good throughput, for example. We can't really, um, or 
uh, we could uh, consider using the out-of-band messages for TCP, but uh, unfortunately, I think that is not designed to send a lot, a lot uh, of pages. For example, the page requests can be a lot, if, especially if the vCPU, uh, vCPU number is large. We can have uh, plenty of uh, page requests coming to the source. So uh, we can be sending a lot of uh, urgent pages, which is a lot of data. It may not be suitable for a message OOB for TCP. So what we, uh, but what we can do here is maybe we can directly separate the channel like this. So we could have the uh, one channel only to send the background pages. And if there is any urgent pages, we use another channel. Um, and uh, uh, to make it uh, even better, we have a fast page resolve thread on the destination just to resolve this page vote. So uh, this, is, this needs some rework on the migration logic because uh, currently we do have a lot of uh, global states to maintain RAM uh, information. Uh, but uh, after this change, uh, the, from my measurement, uh, the page fold latencies can be greatly reduced. So this is the first issue we are tackling with. There is another issue. It's about a huge page granularity. Uh, QMU sends pages always in huge page granularity. For example, if we are sending a background page, and if we are using a huge page on the host to back the guest pages, we can only send a whole huge page. And after that, we can send another huge page. So the next huge page can either be a background page or it can be an urgent page that is requested. Which means uh, we cannot really interrupt sending a huge page. Uh, why? why? Why is that? It's the, it is because QMU actually has, has a receive buffer to buffer the huge pages. We cannot do that. We cannot directly copy the data into the guest memory because otherwise the guest will see partial huge page. So what we need to do is we have a huge page buffer. We cache all the data uh, until we received the complete huge page and we atomically update the page table with that page. It means we need some kind of buffering and we cannot have a lot of those buffers. We cannot send the first page of the huge page one and the first page of huge page two. We cannot really cache huge page one, two, three, four, five and forever. It will use up host memory easily. So, so far we only have one temporary huge page and that's why we can only send one huge page one at a time. So uh, if to look at, look into this, it is really another thing that uh, it will make it even slower when we are working with huge pages uh, and when there is a page request. So if we see, so I, I further amplified this, assuming we have the urgent page stream already. If uh, we have, uh, we are, when we are sending page one, two, three, four, assuming it will, will form a huge page, when we are sending page one, we got a request saying that we want the huge page five, six, seven, eight. We can't really do so. We need to wait until the two, three, four pages are sent. So uh, there's these are all extra latency overheads. So basically we are blocked before sending the whole background host pages. Uh, so what we can do though, is we can consider interrupting the huge page sending uh, for a background page after the first page first the small page is sent we quickly switch over to the urgent page uh, request send it to, send it right away afterwards we can resume with page uh, 234 and actually with uh, multiple channels, it is achievable because we will actually have multiple buffers for the huge pages anyway. But we need extra logic on the send side to make sure that this will be uh, triggered and uh, the recovery will be properly done. 
So about the last issue, it is about the, really about the migration thread itself. So after we apply uh, solution one, solution two, we will see uh, obvious uh, reduction on paid for the uh, requests already, especially on 4K. So so the solution two is really for huge page only. If for small page, uh, solution so solution two doesn't really work. Majorly for solution one, which is the channel separation part. Uh, it will bring, uh, in my measurement, uh, uh, about uh, 20 uh, times uh, speed up. So, but uh, we can still do something better than that, uh, which, uh, which is something, um, if we try to think about it, it is really about the migration thread that is still uh, the major bottleneck in that uh, when we are sending a background page using send message, uh, if we remember, the buffer can fall, and when that falls, when that is full, it means we can be blocked. By uh, when flushing the background buffers, the thread can be blocked. The channel is free; we have a separate channel, but uh, the thread is blocked there. So we need some way to work around this, probably by using a separate channel. To, uh, to send the urgent pages, even if the migration thread is blocked, waiting for the NIC to uh, free more send buffers. So it will not make uh, slow down the urgent page requests uh, handling. Uh, so uh, why we use migration thread as the only thread to migrate a page? Because of many reasons. Majorly is about a legacy state maintenance, because many of the RAM states are managed in uh, migration thread only. It's global, so basically uh, we need to make sure uh, many of these can be threadified. And uh, there are a lot of features actually has a dependent on the main uh, main thread. So what is the solution for this? Um, we probably need to refactor the global states into something like a per channel or per thread once, especially if we can have one thread to work on one channel. What I was uh, trying with right now is turning the page search status into a per channel structure. So we have one for each of the channel. Basically, we have one for the page requests as well, and the other one for the background pages. And uh, we, have, we need to have a way to manage page ownership, uh, which means when we have, because now we can have more than one thread sending pages, we need to know, which is, this is the question about uh, who will send which page. So it's actually a very simple, because we have the dirty bitmap anyway. Even for postcard, we will have the bitmap ready. So anyone who take the ownership of the bitmap by clearing it from 1 to 0, we'll own this page. And the bitmap is protected by the bitmap mutex. We can also, uh, previously it was okay to use uh, atomic operations, but this one for this one, uh, now the bitmap mutex is protecting actually more things, uh, more details we can look at uh, the patch sets later on. I have the links. So, and uh, one thing to make sure is we really need to release all the global locks during sending, for example, send a message, and it could block. So we should not have it block other threads from running. And so, uh, with all the faci uh, facilities ready, we can send pages outside the migration thread. So we can uh, have create a new thread doing this, or how about we just send it in the return thread? We have the return thread, receiving the uh, page requests. And actually the fastest way to do this is to, sh to send the pages back as soon as possible, right after we receive it. And with this, we can also drop the page request queue because it does not need, it's not needed anymore. Then all the urgent pages will be received in the same thread and the sent in the same thread. It has nothing to do with the migration thread anymore. So uh, this is a recap on previous, uh, previously on what we have with a separate urgent page stream channel. 
which looks already good enough. And uh, regarding solution three, it will be something like this one. So uh, we can see firstly, the page queue is removed. We don't have that, we don't need that. And uh, for the two channels, we are uh, delivering, we are moving the ownership of the urgent page stream from the migration thread to the return thread. And uh, since we have uh, two threads running in, in, uh, concurrently, we can actually send pages unlike previously. If you see, we can only send one page at a time, uh, even though well, when I say send, I mean uh, queue it into the buffers, uh, but we cannot queue at the same time. We need to queue it one by one, but uh, we can send it. Um, so the sockets are separate, but uh, the thread is still shared. So that in the new layout, everything is concurrent. Everything can happen concurrently, as long as there is no log contention. Uh, actually, there can be, but uh, as long as we proper release the log properly, uh, then uh, we will mostly be running in parallel. And uh, and if you if we see on the destination, uh, there is no, no change at all. It's only about on the sender side and the take ownership. And that's all of it. As simple as that. So it's, I don't think it's a very, very complicated thing, but it really, really helps on, on reducing the latency. So here are some performance numbers. Uh, the test was carried out with a virtual machine with 20 vCPUs and a 20 gig mem memory. Uh, with one busy random write workload over 18 gigabytes. The test program is uh, pasted here, which is a tool that I, I normally use for migration tests. And also a script that I, I try to cache, capture the page fold latencies. Note that I only capture real page folds. For example, uh, when there is a major page fold, I don't trap minor page folds. Uh, for example, if the page is quickly, can be quickly, uh, page fault can be quickly resolved, it is not a major page fault. It means, the, a major fault, page fault means we will generate a message to user for the FD. Uh, so, the result for a vanilla post copy, uh, if we still remember, it takes uh, an average of 12 uh, milliseconds, which is uh, 12, actually 12,000 microseconds. With the preempt full solution, uh, one, two, three applied, it only needs a 229 microseconds for each of the page requests in average, which is a 50 uh, times speed up. And this is a quick distribution of the latencies. Uh, so we can see that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the above one is vanilla post copy and the, the one below is the preempt full. So uh, we can have a reference. Mostly uh, the vanilla post copy uh, page requests falls into the eight, eight milliseconds to uh, 16 millisecond bucket. Mostly because I think uh, of the uh, pages being blocked by the background pages. And the preempt for is majorly only uh, need uh, 100 or to 200 microseconds uh, in general. So uh, this uh, post copy preemption work uh, is done in two parts. The first part is called, uh, let's call it part one, is already merged in 7.1, uh, including solution one, two. It uh, provides already uh, around uh, 20 times speed up for random access. So for post copy preemption part uh, two, uh, I have uh, RFC posted uh, which include uh, solution three only and is during review. So any of the comments will be greatly welcome. Uh, that's all of it. Thank you very much.